First thing I'm going to do is cross off all the teeth that are missing on my cast, which would be all my premolars and molars on this side all the way up to the canine. First thing that I'm going to do when I draw my design, I'm going to do my clasp assemblies. I have a cingulum rest that I cut into the maxillary canine. The mandibular canine, we might put an acid etch cingulum rest, even though more reliable is an incisal rest on the mandibular. The wrought wire, I'm going to plate the back of my canine above my cingulum rest and the wrought wire will come off of this marginal ridge area. It is drawn as a single line and I'm going to put a little hatch there to show that's where my .02 undercut is located and I note that it's a wrought wire for my laboratory technician. I'm going to go ahead and plate these teeth and as an indirect retainer to prevent rotation of my partial in an upward vertical direction in the posterior area when I eat food, I place an indirect retainer on the tooth that is the farthest away from the fulcrum line. And my fulcrum line is between my two abutment teeth, that first premolar and the canine. And the tooth farthest away from that is my central incisor. On maxillary central incisors, you can place a cingulum rest. On laterals on the maxillary, you would not. On the mandibular, you would not place them on either the maxillary lateral, I mean the uh, laterals or the centrals on a mandibular. On this particular tooth, I'm going to do the eye bar, so I have a mesial rest. That mesial rest has to have a little sluice way for the metal to get up into that area from the lingual. And my metal will come around here, and at this point it's going to come down and avoid a marginal gingiva by a minimum of six, five or six millimeters on the maxillary, so I'm going to put a um, five or six millimeter. The guide plate wraps around the side of the tooth just a little bit to where the tooth becomes smaller so that it traps the tooth from being able to move to the lingual when this eye bar flexes into the undercut on the tooth. The eye bar touches the tooth at the .01 undercut and then it comes up to the survey line or it forms at least a 2 by 2 millimeter pod with the bottom of the pod being at the .01 undercut the top of the pod, ideally below the survey line, but depending on where the contour of the tooth is, it might be a little higher. Um, I'm going to swing my, the eye bar comes straight up the middle of the tooth buccolingually, and it goes into a .01 undercut. It goes down the front of the tooth, and at the six millimeter mark, it can swing posteriorly, and then it tries to, um, have some length to it so that it will flex. It's coming down, it's only about two millimeters wide at this area and it's only about two millimeters wide where it uh, emerges out of the base attachment and or uh, the base itself and it's wider at its origin than it is at its terminus. My acrylic resin is going to have an external finish line. So my external finish line comes back here and allows enough room to set a tooth wide, as wide as its replacement. And it comes back to um, behind that, right, right at the end of that third molar. And then it swings forward a little bit. The other part comes over the crest of the ridge slightly and it comes back like this, but not quite to this point here. I'm going to go ahead and draw my acrylic resin because my acrylic resin would form an intern have an internal finish line along here where the acrylic meets the major connector and then it would come down and become a flange that comes around and joins that little pointed area right there. Now within this, we're going to have some of our holes. And there's our processing stop. And these holes pretty much fill up this area 
We'll have some little struts between our holes. And our eye bar comes back here and hopefully hits one of these struts areas where it can cast decently. On the other side, there comes our external finish line right along in this area and it ends right about in here. And again, it's going to swing forward again. And our base attachment comes back like this. And we have a lot of loops. this last little loop that it's going to be our processing stop. Our acrylic resin will have an internal finish line and it will have a flange that comes back here goes into Himmler notch and finishes off right there at that point. Now since we have a torus we're going to swing in here and avoid our torus. How much we have to swing, we'll have to wait till we get to the cast. If there's enough room, you could in fact open it up. If you have enough room to make this at least the size of a nickel and you have at least, uh, say, six millimeters of space in this area here, you would go ahead and open it up. If you could not, then I would bring my horseshoe in farther to open up the pallet like this. Now that makes it weaker. There's no doubt that's one of the problems with the horseshoe shaped major connector is that it can flex and bend a little bit. I think I have everything in here but you'll have to check on me. I have some other designs drawn up. This is basically the same thing where I came in a little bit farther I forgot to add those solder joints on for my wrought wires on that last one. I drew one design where I used a cast round clasp which doesn't solder way back here, it just emerges from that framework right at this point on one side and then on the other side I did the um, uh, modified T-bar going to the distal facial and when this bar comes up it comes up and it goes above the survey line a little bit at or above the survey line and then this just this little component area swings back into an undercut. Um, that one calls for an embrasure rest and instead of dipping down I plated this but when you plate it it should be plated right at the survey line and I plated it because if I dipped down it would probably interfere with me being able to put much of a hole in this palatal area. So that's another design. I think I drew the wrought wire on our distal abutment here which would call for a distal rest, a wrought wire class to a .02 mesial facial undercut and again plating at the survey line on the lingual aspect. So this one's kind of nice in that it's symmetrical on both sides and it doesn't dip down. You wouldn't have any area that would trap um, food while eating and uh, that looks like a pretty simple design that would also be a good working design.